Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel, and I'm here today with a list for the booktube spin number five. So this uh, concept was originated by Rick McDonnell, and I will link his latest announcement about booktube spin number five down below. Um, but essentially the concept is that you put together a list of 20 books, and tomorrow, which is Friday, January 14th, I believe, um, Rick will spin a wheel, and I think he's going to call two numbers from the list, and whatever numbers those correspond to, you're supposed to read those two books um, by the end of March. Um, and I'll go ahead and say that whether or not I'm going to read only one book or both books will depend on which book gets called, because there are a few books on this list that are longer and or denser than the other ones. <laughs> Um, so let's just let's just go right so the first book on my list I don't actually have here to hold up and show you it's at my office at work but this is Rebecca Walker's black white and Jewish um, Rebecca Walker is the daughter of Alice Walker um, and uh, Alice Walker's ex-husband who was Jewish um, so so basically this is a memoir of Rebecca Walker's own personal um, experience in life uh, and this is a book that I've owned for a number of years now and still haven't read um, so interested to get to that one. Um, number two on my list is Matthew Festenstein's Pragmatism and Political Theory from Dewey to Rorty. I've talked about this book several times on this channel and still have not managed to get around to it so honestly I'm kind of hoping two gets called just so I will read this. <laughs> Um, number three is Cheshire Calhoun's Feminism, the Family, and the Politics of the Closet, Lesbian and Gay Displacement. So this was a book that I think I bought as an undergraduate for like a gender studies class, um, but I, I don't think we ever actually read the whole thing. And it's, it's on the shorter side, but because it's theory, I'm sure it, it might also be dense too, so we'll, we'll just see. Number four is Wicked by Gregory Maguire. This is an, a novel that I think I started to read it and got, you know, it's some amount of the way through it many, many years ago because I've owned this book for a long time, like since before I graduated high school. <laughs> but I never managed to make it to the end of it. Um, but this, I think everyone knows this is a retelling of the, of the Wizard of Oz from the point of view of the Wicked Witch of the West. So, um, so that's number four. Uh, number five is Alfred Kazin's On Native Ground. So Alfred Kazin was a um, mid-century Jewish intellectual, public intellectual basically, and this book is a collection of essays of literary criticism, I believe. Yeah, it says a study of American prose literature from 1890 to the present, although the present would be... Um, 1956 when this was originally published, so I don't think I've ever read anything by Kazin, even though he's been referenced in a lot of work that I've uh, read in the past, so interested to get to this. Um, number six is a book that Lindsay gifted me in our holiday book exchange, which is Heather McGee's The Sum of Us, uh, What Racism Costs Everyone and How We Can Prosper Together, so um, this is, to my understanding, a, a, an anti-racist book that basically examines the cost of racism from a financial slash economic perspective, which is not what I've seen before, so I'm definitely interested to um, learn more about that. Uh, number seven is Kazuo Ishiguro's When We Were Orphans. Um, this is the other Ishiguro book I own, aside from Remains of the Day, um, and I love Remains of the Day, as you know, if you've been following my channel, um, for very long, so I definitely am, am eager to get to this one, and I think I've also put it on my priority list for this year anyway, um, so even if it is not called for the booktube spin, I will get to it at some point this year. Um, so that's number seven. Number eight is Ludwig Lewison's The Island Within. And this is an old book by a Jewish American writer that was published around the 1920s, maybe. Um, let me see if there's a publication date on the inside. Yeah, 1928. So it says that this follows the psychological and social development of Reb Mendel and his family in their old world setting. 
giving a vivid impression of the piety, sensitiveness, and intellectual force um, of the characters. In the 1890s comes migration to America and a new set of problems to be faced by the grandchildren of Mendel, um, etc., etc. So I was actually supposed to read this for my comprehensive exams in graduate school and never got around to it. So it um, would be good to finally get to this after all this time. Uh, what is that, nine? Is that right? Okay, I think this is number nine. Um, a Companion to Pragmatism. Uh, this is in the series of the Blackwell Companion to Philosophy. So this is edited by John R. Shook and Joseph Margolis. Um, and this is, it's not super long, but it is over 400 pages, and it is all critical essays about pragmatism. So I imagine it will be quite dense. So if this is the book that is called, then I will only probably be reading this book, honestly. So, um, so it has essays in here on um, the classical pragmatists like William, uh, like William James, Charles Sanders, Sanders Peirce, John Dewey, Jane Addams, Alan Locke, etc. Um, then it has stuff on more recent figures like Richard Rorty and... Um, Hillary Putnam, um, and yeah, and, and other stuff too. So I am interested to read this, but again, it, it's um, pretty small print, right? <laughs> and like I said, it is a little over 400 pages, and it's all, you know, critical essays about pragmatism, which I'm sure will be done. So, um, all right, man, I'm running out of space for these books. <laughs> Okay, number 10 is Erica Jong's Fear of Flying. Um, this is, uh, this was a sort of bestseller whenever it was published, which I think was maybe in the 70s. Yeah, 1973. Groundbreaking, uninhibited story of Isadora Wing and her desire to fly. Um, so basically it's like exploring women's sex lives and things like that. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess we'll see if I like this or not. Number eleven is Fred Brooks, The Design of Design. So I already read Fred Brooks's um, The Mythical Man Month last year, um, and this is the other book by him that I own that he personally gifted to me and signed it. Right. So it says for Courtney Ferrer with warm appreciation for all your help, Fred Brooks, 2010. Um, so I think this was published in 2010, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, so this was published in 2010, and it basically is about design. Um, so it says he pinpoints constants inherent in all design projects and uncovers processes and patterns likely to lead to excellence, um, including his design of, I think, his family's beach home also. Um, so if this gets called, this will very likely be the only book that I read, just because it took me so long to get through the Mythical Man one. So, um, number 12 is Primo Levi's Survival in Auschwitz, and this is a book that I really think I might have read before, but I don't remember it, so we're gonna just include it anyway, um, and, and I will read it at some point, even if I don't read it for the booktube spin, because I think it's, um, it's also like on my list for this year of books I want to get to. So, um, number thirteen is Ralph Ellison's Shadow and Act. Um, Ralph Ellison famously wrote the novel Invisible Man, but he also was quite well known for his um, essays and criticism. So this is a collection of those. I read some of these for my comprehensive exams in African American Lit in graduate school, but I haven't read the whole collection. Um, but there are essays in here like The World in the Jug and Change the Joke and Slip the Yoke. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely interested to read this, this full collection. Number 14. Yeah, 14. <laughs> it's Philip Roth's Port Noise Complaint. Um, this is the last Philip Roth book that I own that I have not yet read. Um, and since I read Sabbath Theater toward the end of last year with... Um, Sandy and Ms. Reads a lot. I kind of feel like Portnoy's complaint cannot possibly be worse than that. Like, I know this was a very controversial book when it first came out, but um, I've also kind of heard people say that Portnoy's complaint is like kid stuff compared to Sabbath Theater. So, 
Um, and I've also heard people say that this is funny, so I guess I guess we'll see if it gets called. Um, and I think regardless, it's also on my 2022 priority list, so I'll get to it at some point, even if not in the next two months. Um, number 15 is a book that I recently acquired, Woman Hollering Creek and Other Stories by Sandra Cisneros. Um, and this is on the short side. Uh, again, I'm interested to read more by Sandra Cisneros. I really loved House of Mango Street, and I have heard good things about this collection. Uh, number 16 is The Provincials by Eli Evans, A Personal History of Jews in the South. Um, and yeah, basically that's just what it says on the, on the cover. Um, it's his classic portrait of Jews in the South. It takes readers inside the nexus between Southern and Jewish histories from the earliest immigrants to the present day. Um, it evokes the rhythms and heartbeat of Southern Jewish life. It intertwines his autobiography of growing up Jewish in the Bible Belt with stories of communities, individuals, and events in this unfamiliar American landscape. So, interested to get to this one, too. Um, number 17 is Clive Barker's The Hellbound Heart, um, which is on my genre fiction project and is also a book that I recently acquired. Um, so, again, we'll get to that at some point this year, even if not in the next two months. Um, number 18 is uh, The Short American Century, a postmortem by, edited by Andrew J. Um, Basevich. Uh, and this, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure to tell you what this is about. Um, it does say in here that it, writing in Life magazine in February 1941, Henry Luce memorably announced the arrival of the American Century. This phrase caught on, as did the belief that America's moment was at hand, yet, as Andrew J. Basevich makes clear, that century has now ended, the victim of strategic miscalculation, military misadventures, and economic decline. To take stock of the short American century and place it in historical perspective, he's assembled a richly provocative range of perspectives. So, um, this was published in 2012, so it's, it's a bit outdated at this point, but still interested to see what, uh, what I said about that. Um, number 19 is also a recent acquisition, the Talmud, a biography by um, Harry Friedman. So basically just a short history, about 200-ish pages of um, the Talmud, a Jewish religious text of interpretation. Um, and then number 20, I also do not have here with me because it is at my office at work, but this is Toni Morrison's Racing, Justice, Engendering Power. And this is a collection of essays that she edited about um, the Clarence Thomas hearings and uh, Anita Hill's testimony against Clarence Thomas. Um, so I am interested to read that one as well. Um, by the way, I decided on all of these books using a random number generator, which I stole that idea from Jenny at What's Booking. So I'll link her video um, of the booktube spin down below as well. But I thought that was a good idea. So I basically just made a whole list of all the books that I own that I haven't read. Um, you know, not including books that I'm reading currently or books that I have reserved for Buddy Reads later in the year or anything like that. So it was something like, you know, a little, little bit over 80 books. And so I just used a random number generator to put all these books on the list. <laughs> so if it seems haphazard and random, it is. <laughs> so anyway, so those are my uh, booktube spin books. I will be interested to see which two numbers Rick calls tomorrow and whether I'll be reading one or both books uh, within the next two months. So thank you for watching this. If you have thoughts about any of these books, as always, I would love to hear that. Let me know down in the comments below. If you've done a booktube spin video and I haven't watched it yet, let me know and I'll go watch it. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call your mother?